On-screen chemistry matters. When you think of examples of great on-screen chemistry, what examples come to mind? about you is the lie. Everything. Stay away from me. Debbie, don't go. You don't get to have me. Don't you get it? You're overreacting. Yeah, yeah. A movie can live or die, depending on whether the stars have the right chemistry. Of course, there's some other factors involved, but I believe chemistry is one of the strongest, most indicators of that. Bad on-screen chemistry could tank or make your int intended film a joke. If we're gonna die, I want you to know something. I was in a pharmacy a while ago. There was a really good looking pharmacist behind the counter. Really good looking. And I went up and I asked where the cough syrup was. I didn't even have a cough, and I almost bought it. And I'm talking about a completely superfluous bottle of cough syrup. That's like six bucks. Are you joking? Thank you. In here, I'm stalking you. Wait a minute, you know her? First of all, do not say my name in this room. All right, second of all, you're out of line. This is a professional situation and you have no right to intrude here. What kind of professional situation? I can't believe this. A f***ing man? Okay, I, I really thought this was all about Sharon. What are you, telling people where we are now? Mind your own f***ing business. Shut the f*** up. Blow me. Listen, both of you shut up. Look, I haven't told anybody where we are. And Robin, this is a professional situation. Our problems have nothing to do with Sharon and have- I'm not smart. However, I can tell the difference when two characters really like each other or whether they are just tolerating each other for a paycheck. You can literally feel the energy off the screen. It adds to the film when the chemistry is really great or it takes away when the chemistry is bad. I have loved the film The Mummy for years. The action, the suspense, the writing, Yes, even the special effects. They've actually held up a little bit over the years, matter of fact. However, the one aspect I love most of all about the film is the electric chemistry between Rick O'Connell, played by the spectacular Brendan Fraser, and Evelyn E.B. Carnahan, played by the captivating, beautiful, and talented Rachel Weisz. It's an aspect that puts a smile on my face every time I see this pair together on film. It's so fun watching them dance around each other in various scenes as they battle a nigh omnipotent mummy sorcerer. In fact, their chemistry and bond are the foundation and driving force of the film itself. However, there is one particular scene in the film, other than the Noxa and the Moon scene, and I know you know which one I'm talking about. It's the one of the opening scene. It has her. I don't. I'm not going to explain it too more. I might show it. I might not. Who, who knows? But there's one particular scene other than that scene um, that gives me so much joy every time I watch it and rewatch it. In this scene, I'm going to entitle it, I'm a librarian slash Evie being drunk. And I want to discuss why I love it so much. So let's get to it. <laughs> Uh, I know when to say no. Uh-huh. 
And unlike your brother, miss, you, I just don't get. Ah, mm -hmm. I know. You're wondering, what is a place like me doing in a girl like this? Yeah, something like that. Egypt is in my blood. You see, my, my father was a very, very famous explorer. And he loved Egypt so much, he married my mother, who was an Egyptian and quite an adventurer herself. Mm. Mm. You know, I get your father and I get your mother. And, uh, I get him, but what are you doing here? Oh, look, I, I may not be an explorer or, or an adventurer or a treasure seeker or a gunfighter, Mr. O'Connell, but I am proud of what I am. And what is that? I am a librarian. Call me Rick. Rick. You might be asking yourself, why do you love this scene? If you cannot see, uh, I have a big smile on my face. There are so many things I love about it. I, I love the space that Evie and Rick inhabit, you know. Evie is drunk, yes, and her inhibitions are softening now that she is getting to know Rick more and more. Maybe it's a combination of her being in constant danger, being on this adventurous undertaking with Rick and the crew, or maybe it's because simply Rick is hot. Whatever the reason, Evie in this scene is letting her hair down. I actually love how Rick wants to know more about Evie. He like he says, like, I don't I don't get you. I get your brother. I just don't get you. How he's almost aloof to Evie's subtle and not so subtle advances. He is being respectful to Evie as well. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to take a big assumption. But if this film had been taking place at any other time past, uh, mind you, uh, let's say in the 40s or you know early 70s, Rick would have probably pulled Evie's clothes off then and there. But like I said, Rick is being respectful. And I like that. I admire that in the care of the scene. I admire that in how the director directed the scene. He is watching her movements and protecting her so she doesn't fall over. Evie is being more forward. And I love how Rachel Weiss is balancing this cute, funny, adorable, and almost seductive quality in her performance. She is committing to the scene. And she is the one getting closer and closer to Rick, physically as well as mentally. I think in some ways, this is her kind of getting back at Rick from earlier in the movie. You know how he stole that kiss from her while he was in prison? I could be wrong, though. Stealing a kiss or assault is a classic trope in romance and adventure stories that have been around since time immemorial. You know, think of your Snow White, your Sleeping Beauties, that sort of thing. It has slowly faded away from cinema because of its problematic nature. But in the context of this film, which is inspired by all old Hollywood, it comes off as daring and romantic, as well as comedic. Evie, Rick, and Jonathan, played by the legendary John Hanna, save the world and beat the mummy by working together using their brains, beauty, and brawn. What I love about this scene is that Evie loves being a librarian. She loves her heritage. She has actually come alive, not by being locked away in the stodgy confines of a museum, but by traveling across the desert sands to find not only, her, not only her true purpose, but the love of her life. She is an active participant in this story. When she tells Rick, I'm going to kiss you now, I was like, okay, okay then, let's, let's, let's go. Yes, like I said before, she is drunk, but the film does a wonderful job of balancing romance, seduction, and finally, slapstick humor. As Evie, is, as Evie goes in for a kiss and then falls to Rick's side, passed out drunk. The film's tug and pull, will they, won't they, will they nature, is what keeps me glued to the screen. It's a testament to Rachel Weiss's comedic time in, and I love how the scene fades to black 
as Rip kisses the air, fully committing to the act, if not himself successfully rewarded. The reason why I wanted to do this video is because I love it when I'm surprised by something. Not surprised negatively, but in a positive way. Example, like originally when this movie actually came out back in the 1990s, um, I had no intention. Honestly, I had no intention of seeing it. Um, I wanted to see uh, Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, but unfortunately on May 19th, I believe that was when it debuted it. Uh, we went out to the movie theaters, this Uptown Theater in Georgetown, and unfortunately, <laughs> the tickets were sold out. So my dad and my two sisters, we looked at another movie that I was playing, and we saw The Mummy. And the thing that immediately struck me of wanting to go see that was, you know, one, it was taking place in Egypt. And two, we saw the special effects of when the sandstorm turned into a face and the mouth opened up and swallowed people. We had never seen it before. You know, news stations were going on and on about how you know, revolutionary the tech was in this movie. And he's like, you know, why not? You know, I know it's, it's nowhere compared to Phantom Menace in terms of techno technolo technological advances, but let's give it a shot. And long story short, I'm so glad that we did. This movie is a constant and yearly viewing in my home. Every time I see it, I have a big smile on my face. My heart feels full. I, I'm, you don't really get that feeling anymore with a, a certain films, you know, where it's almost like you're, you're, you know, reminiscing or recapturing that moment with an old friend. This movie is like an old friend every time I watch it because of how it makes me feel. And yes, the certain scenes in this film are problematic. Uh, the mummies are not really of Egyptian background. Um, you know, there are problematic elements to this film, but if you can kind of push those aside a little bit and just watch this film for what it is, you know, uh, just a, a thrill ride, uh, a romance, you know, like Romance in the Stone or something like that, then you will be able to enjoy yourself. You know, don't try to put, I know it's hard now to kind of do this, but don't put your 21st century viewpoints on a 20th century intellectual property. It, it, it's not going to mesh well. It was a different time, different things happened back then. And this film was keenly aware of the cliches and stereotypes around its making. And it kind of injected those cliches, those stereotypes um, into its film. And for good or ill, it's still one of my most favorite films that I've ever seen. I It doesn't matter if it's on TNT, TBS, you know, the Nature Channel, I don't care. I'll always take time to go see The Mummy. So I, like I said, I'm so glad that, you know, my family was able to see this. Steven Summers and the entire cast and crew did an outstanding job. I cannot speak, and honestly, I cannot speak to the subsequent 9 million Scorpion King films or the, the subsequent sequels to The Mummy um, or even the horrid 2017 remake with Tom Can't Stop Running Cruise. But what I can say is that chemistry matters. It matters so much. And The Mummy is a great film and stands the test of time. Like I said, not because of its special effects, but because of its attention to detail and its writing, direction, and on-screen stars who carry this film on sheer chemistry alone. If you stayed this long in the video, I really appreciate it and thank you. And actually, I'm actually curious, you know, what are some examples that you may have of good or bad uh, on-screen chemistries um, that you've seen either recently or in the past? Do you agree with my choices? If you didn't, leave a comment. If you did, leave a like and a comment. I really appreciate it. And like I said, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. Take care of yourself and each other, and thank you for watching. Cabs out.